my aunt who's told me, Hey, don't do it. Your uncle Johnny didn't, he did it and he lost money. I listened to her. No, I didn't listen to her. I had my grit put, I said, you know what? I'm going to persevere. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to push through this and doing that. I made more and more wins, made some more mistakes, but every single thing that was a loss or a mistake, I ripped it out of my business. Every win, I kept it in my business. That's literally what I'm coaching now because I'm an investor. I'm not a coach. I'm an investor. I just so happen people ask me questions and I give them answers of what I'm doing so that I can help them out. But that's the golden nugget is definitely have grit, push through it, be patient on top of passive income, building business, getting experts, all that sort of stuff, but be persistent. It will pay off. Remember, we don't wait to buy real estate. We buy real estate and wait. And you want to look back 20 years from now saying, I'm so glad I listen to Vin Key's podcast every single week because I am actually an investor now. I am financially free, whatever that looks like for you. This is the Real Estate Wife Show, and I'm your host, Winky Lumba, a commercial real estate investor. And today I have a very special guest. Welcome, Dustin, to the Real Estate Wife Show. Hi, Vinky. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I, I love being on podcasts. Well, actually, I love real estate investing, which allows me to have free time in my life and not work for somebody else. I like the term successfully unemployed where I literally found a way to make money for myself and my family without working. I call it the J-O-B, the just over broke job. But with that, have free time to come on podcast and talk to great people like you. So thank you so much for having me on the show. Awesome. Little bit about Dustin. He successfully became unemployed. Just wanted to say it again, emphasize it, unemployed at age 37 by investing in real estate rental properties. He's now on a mission to help everyone to quit their job and never have to have a job again. He also helps his students build a successful real estate investing business all over the country. In 2015, Dustin wrote his first book, How to Quit Your Job with Rental Properties, which quickly became a bestseller. Wow, we'd love to talk about that. So today we're gonna be uh, discussing with Dustin about the financial freedom or how to become financially free. Dustin, you had an amazing journey until now. So please share with me, how did you get here? Yeah, so in my life, I've always followed what like we're told, like we're all told the same type of thing. You go to school, you get good grades and you take those good grades, you go to college or university, you get even better grades if you can, but you get in thousands of dollars of debt and then you get a piece of paper, it's called a degree. And then you go to companies and you hopefully find a quote unquote career and then work 40 plus years of your life and then maybe retire when you're 65, 70 years old and then live on what you managed to save that entire time working that just over broke job. So I'm doing that exact same thing. That's all I ever known. But at the same time, I've always been entrepreneurial. My dad was an entrepreneur. He had his own business and everything. So I started making or, you know, businesses and creating businesses. And I had a graphic website design company. I had a skateboard manufacturing business and even a commercial real estate uh, um, uh, property that had uh, yeah, pizzeria and convenience store all wrapped in one. And so I was doing that, but at the same time, I wanted the most risk averse job you could ever think of. So I was in California at the time and I got a job in the local county government doing IT. And so think about risk averse, California is not going anywhere. anywhere. Uh, the government's not going anywhere and IT is definitely not going anywhere. So I'm doing that, but at the same time, I bought one rental property, Vinky, and it was out of state. I bought that one rental property and it started making me passive income every single month. $250 was the minimum. I was making more than that. And then I knew that I wanted to be an investor, but you know how it is. Life just starts getting in the way. And my wife and I started having kid after kid. Eventually we had our fourth kids, our fourth child. We had four kids and you can see them. If you watch the video, you can see them in the background. Uh, they're fantastic. But here's what really got me and shoved me to become a real estate investor. So when my fourth child was born, I went on paternity leave. That's where the dad stays at home with a mom, changes poopy diapers and bonds with the baby and all that good stuff. And well, I go back to work. And in that same week that I go back to work, I get a call from my boss's 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 secretary, like the top dog. 
And she says, Dustin, would you please come to the office? And I said, sure. And remember, remember, this is a sit down desk job, you know, for local county government. And I sat there for a second. I thought, why in the world would they call me to the office at Friday at 3.30 in the afternoon? I've seen plenty of movies. This isn't a good sign. And I immediately shook off the ideas of being laid off, shook that off. But I remembered there was about two months before some rumors that there could potentially be budget problems in the county. But I shook it off. I said, there's no way. So I get up and then I walk down the hallway to my boss's office. And as I'm walking down this hallway, Vinky, it's the hallway's not very long, but honestly, every step that I took, it felt like the hallway got longer and longer <laughs> and longer. And it felt like my feet became lead bricks because it was really weighing on me that I could potentially lose my job. Well, I get down the hallway and I turn the corner and I see my boss's door. His door is closed. And I see a secretary there, super sweet, nice old lady. And she says, Dustin, would you please have a seat? And she's trying to console me with her eyes and kind of sheepishly grinning at me because she knows everything about what's going on. I know nothing about what's going on. So I go and I take my seat and I start thinking about my life. That whole plan that we're all taught, you know, go to school and get a career. If I get laid off right now, that gets taken away from me. Did I just waste my life doing this? And then I realized, oh my goodness, how am I going to feed my family? Does that make me a failure as a father? Does that make me a failure as a husband, as a man trying to provide for his family? Well, as I'm sitting there, my hands get all sweaty. My, hand, uh, my forehead gets all clammy because I am just so nervous about this. But the door to my boss's office opens up and out walks a lady, a coworker of mine with a piece of paper in her hands. She is noticeably distraught, noticeably upset. She's not necessarily crying, but she, her world has been rocked. You can tell that. Mm -hmm. She passes by me and my boss says, Dustin, would you please come in the office? I get up and I go into the office and I get laid off. And remember, this is the <laughs> government. Nobody gets fired or laid off from the government, but I did. And this is the reason why I tell the story because I learned a lesson here. And well, I take that layoff notice and I go back and I sit at my desk and I sit there just getting laid off. And I realized two things. This is the reason why I tell the story. So number one, I need to get another job. I need to be able to provide for my family. So I was really blessed, praise the Lord, to find another job in the same county, different department, wasn't having issues, check. Got that. But second thing, sitting there in my desk and everybody listening to this, you need to realize this. I realized I am now, if I would get laid off and not have a job, I would not be able to provide for my family. I need to make sure that this never ever happens again. I need to make sure that nobody has the ability to take away my ability to feed my family. So right then and there, I realized I knew I wanted to be an investor, but life got in the way. I said, no longer would I ever let life get in the way. I said, from now on, I'm going to tell everybody, you know, when you get asked that question, what do you do for a living or what do you do? I usually answer the question just like everybody. Oh, I work for the county. I do IT, you know, just reply with our job. Well, I'm basically projecting the value that I put on myself as coming from my job. My value doesn't come from my job. My value comes from my God and from myself and from my family. So right then and there, I said, no longer will I reply with my job. I will say I am an investor. Now, it may so happen that 100% of my money comes from my job. That's not my part-time job. I am a full-time investor. So fast forward, started buying property after property after property, each one making me a minimum of $250 a month in passive income. That's the bare minimum. Eventually, I had 30 plus properties. And I was like, even though I'm making $75,000 a year, this job, I'm losing money working here. So last part of the story, I went to my new boss, good boss and all. And I said, boss, here's your layoff notice. And he, we laughed and, you know, jokingly. And he says, Dustin, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I don't have to do anything. I own real estate. It works for me. I make money every single month. And the last part is I would walk to and from my job a mile and a half every single day. I've done it a thousand times. This last time, if you contrast me walking down the hallway, my, my feet became lead bricks. Walking down the, to my car, mile and a half walk, I felt like I was walking on clouds because I knew I would never, ever need a job again. And I protected my family so I could feed them. And everybody listening, you need to realize that you are not getting paid what you are worth. You are so much more valuable than anybody can ever pay you. And this is how you're going to know. Your boss is paying you just enough to keep you working without quitting but not so much money, it takes money out of their pocket. What you need to do is get financial independence. You need to start putting your own time into the things that you can own and actually have your own value go to your own businesses and everything. That's what I did and that's what I suggest on real estate was for me. But I'll pause it because I've been talking a lot, but Vicky, what, what uh, questions do you have? Oh my God, I love your story. 
And I was just like taken away by your story. I was like totally in tune with that because I did the same thing. I had the similar background in, in IT for 20 years and I could feel your pain, you know, how people don't value you in the corporate world. You are just a job, just an employee. So you have to learn to know who you are first. And then you need to write your own story because most of the time we take our story and try to plug into somebody else's story, you know, we're working, working for somebody else. And why can't we do the same thing for ourselves? So here I'm going to ask you this question now. You were unemployed at age 37. Again, I'm going to say unemployed and by becoming an investor, right, which is your strength. So now how are you teaching the others to do the same thing? I mean, your story is really, really good and you're really passionate about telling your story. But the thing is, just by sharing your story, a lot of people, they are still hesitant to take action. They're not sure about the real estate investing. They're sitting on the sidelines like, one day I will invest. But when will be that one day? Why can't that one day be today? And I believe it absolutely can. So there's a couple of things I realized. So number one, it is more risky because a lot of people, a lot of students that I coach, they say, hey, is investing in real estate is risky. I said, I found because I got laid off, it's more risky putting my life in somebody else's hands. That's much more risky. When I do it, when I invest in real estate, I buy one rental property, I make sure that it makes me $250 a month in passive income. Then I make money every single month. And what is interesting, and this is how I really figured it out. I started investing back in 2006 before the crash, and I made money when the crash happened. People were going bankrupt, but because I invested for passive income, cash flow every single month, I made money whether the market went up, down, or sideways every single month. And since then, I bought more and more properties. I'm still buying properties. And so when you're thinking about how you can actually get to where you are investing in real estate, it's really simple when you really think about it. It's not that hard, but that risk factor, it's just because it's unknown. If you have somebody that can show you how to do it, that is a successful person, it's also a coach to other people. So keep listening to Ben Key's podcast, you're gonna be able to get lots of great information. Listen to a week in and week out so that you can grab this information. But what it comes down to is it's unknown. That's why it makes it risky. But here, here's a, let me give you something very, very simple way and analogy to help you to understand. So what I love to coach and teach is how the, uh, basically the opposite of what the quote unquote gurus will tell you. So here's how I started in 2006. I, I was watching late night TV and the infomercial came on and it, the guy said, hey, we're coming to your town, free two hour seminar. We're gonna teach you about real estate. I'm like, this is exciting, yes. And I went to that two hour seminar, so excited. It was all hype, all sales pitch, all for their coaching. It was like a, a two day seminar. And they said, now run to the back. It's normally a billion dollars, but it's a thousand dollars today. I ran to the back, I was so excited. Went to that two day seminar. And it was more hype and more sales pitch for their $50,000 course, their 80,000, it was, it was ridiculous. So I took what little they told me, and this is what all the gurus tell you, but this is what, I'm gonna tell you the wrong way. This is the way I did it. And my property manager started stealing from me within six months. But remember, I've been entrepreneurial. And so I realized when my property manager started stealing from me, there's gotta be a way to do this. I'm not the first one. People have done it in the past. Let me approach it the right way. So here's a quickly, I'll give you quickly the bad way, the wrong way. Don't, you'll, you'll easily forget this. They say, find a property anywhere in the country, then run the numbers. Make sure you're gonna make $50 a month in passive income. You're gonna get appreciation. That's what you invest for. Remember, this is 2006, just like 2020, it's run up and everything. And I'll pause that and say, I don't invest for appreciation. I love it, don't get me wrong, but I'm gonna give these properties to my kids. This is generational wealth that I'm creating. And so with that, they say $50 and you're gonna get appreciation. Then you spend thousands of dollars to buy the property, then spend thousands of dollars to fix up the property. And then you find a tenant and then you find a property manager. Well, in my opinion, that's just about backwards. Imagine doing all that. You try to call a property manager. A property manager says, no, I will not manage that property because I'll get shot there. Well, you no longer have an asset anymore. You have a liability because you can't manage it. You have to manage yourself. What if you can't? So here, that's the wrong way. Forget that. Here is the right way. And I'm gonna give you an analogy of what it looks like. If you're gonna start a convenience store, a convenience store, you know, candy bar, soda machines and all that good stuff. Well, you would not sign a lease on a location, open the doors and set a box of candy bars in there on the ground. You'd go out of business in two seconds. No, you wouldn't do that. 
But what you would do is you would build the business first. And what that looks like is you get the gondolas, those are the shelving units that all the candy bars go on, the countertops, the cold storage, bank accounts, cash registers, insurance, employees, everything in the business before you buy any inventory. Same thing with real estate investing. I build the entire business, and this is what I coach my students. We build the entire business anywhere in the country. Invest, we invest out of state. I invest in Ohio, Texas, and Arizona myself. My students are investing all over the place. But what we do is we build the business, and then we buy a property, and that property is our inventory. And then we put it into our business, and then we have that business make money for us. Last quickly thing I'll say is, remember, if you did all the things the quote-unquote gurus will tell you, and you call a property manager and they say, no, I won't manage their property, I'll get shot there. Instead of calling them and say, property manager, will you manage this property? I've already spent thousands of dollars on it. And they say, no, instead, because you've built the business first, you got experts around you. You say, property manager, I'm looking to buy this property. Will you manage it? They say, no, you're like, great. I've saved time. I've saved money. I don't even need to worry about buying it because I know it's not a good area. Who are the experts? In fact, a lot of my students say, hey, Dustin, you invest in this area. You're the expert. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not the expert. I have a little bit of knowledge, but I hire experts. They are the ones that are on the ground doing the work. And who, what does Oak look? Looks like property managers, contractors, realtors, wholesalers, inspectors, plumbers, roofers. Like we build the entire business, making sure that they are helping us to buy the right properties, fix it up the right amount, and everything in the business before we buy any properties. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it does. It's wonderful, you know, and creating that ecosystem for yourself and it's kind of autopilot a little bit, you know, as you go along. But the thing is, it takes a time to build all that system and getting the right people in your team. So uh, uh, we, I follow the syndication model because I'm a syndicator. So what is your thought on that? You know, some people, uh, they don't want it to quit their job. They want and start from the ground up and then build all this team, do all this effort. So what would you recommend to these people who wanted to keep their primary job and then invest maybe with others who have done the research and who can find the best possible deal in the best possible market? And again, are giving them a huge profit by the end of the day, you know? So what, what would Absolutely. you recommend? It would be the exact same thing in a sense where we're hiring experts. Everything in the, what I'm telling you is we build a business, but the building the business is finding the experts that are going to do what you want them to do. What I do is I don't buy a property unless my property manager signs off on it and says, yes, this is a good property. If I'm going to buy an apartment building, I'm not going to buy an apartment building unless I know I don't have to manage it myself and all the expenses are accounted for for my property manager. Just like I get people ask me, Dustin, how do you afford property managers? I, I don't afford property managers. And Vicky, you'll understand this. So I don't pay my mortgage on any of my properties. I don't pay my taxes. I don't pay my insurance. I don't pay for property managers. I don't pay that stuff. My tenants pay for all that. Same thing with real estate and, and multifamily and syndication. As long as you have a business that's built that all these expenses are accounted for and you make a profit on top of that, if you have those experts that are gonna be doing those things for you, you're gonna be making money. So for me, I love building my business. So I'm making money. If I'm, and I do also invest in other people's syndications because I don't have the time to build that out, but there are great experts who I want to invest with that I know they are good. I know they have a track record. I've inspected everything that they're doing. I've looked at everything they're doing. And I say, yes, you are the expert I want to put my money with. Same thing with a property manager building my own business. Everything is about hiring and getting the right people. Just like the last thing I'll quickly say is if you're going to build that convenience store, well, you're going to need somebody to manage the business. You would not go across the street and grab somebody and say, hey, you got a pulse. Come on in here, manage my business, manage my customers, manage my inventory, manage my money, manage my, my uh, employees. You would not do that. You would build the business first. You'd get the right people. Same thing. If you're going to invest money, don't just find somebody that, oh, yeah, you say that you're going to do good. Let me give you my money. You need to vet the people. You need to make sure that they're experts in their field and then you invest with them. I'm always trying to get, I, I don't wanna be the smartest person in the room. In fact, I know I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I can find the smartest people and I grab onto them and I let them be smart and they do all the work and I just let them do all the work. Esther, you said it very well. When you think you're the smartest person in the room, at that point, you stop learning. And uh, when you stop learning, that's gonna end of your career, end of your life, I would say, because life is all about learning. 
And it's very important to learn from others' experience because our life is not too long that we can possibly make each and every mistake and learn from it. So I'm going to shift the gears a little bit here. Oh, you talk about financial freedom all the time and we can hear in your story. So let's talk about financial freedom a little bit. What does financial freedom mean to you? For me, financial freedom was the ability to provide for my family without depending on somebody else. That's literally what it came down to. Now, there's a huge added benefit that I'm not like working for somebody else doing what they're telling me to do, even though I think it's like might be the wrong way. But hey, you're the boss. I'm going to do it, which I've done that for plenty, many years. I was working for the government. So, yeah, it happened many times. But with that, my financial freedom was basically making sure that my expenses were covered so I could feed my family. That was my goal. Now, I have so many, I've got like hundreds, if not thousands of students now. I coach how to invest in real estate. And with that, everybody's goal is different. And when I'm helping them, when I'm coaching them, I need to know their risk tolerances. Like, are you okay with investing in this? Like the risk tolerances, their goals, what, they're, what they want in their finances. Like, I need to understand that because everybody, like some people don't want to quit their job. I'll give you an example. I have a, a pastor is a pastor in Sacramento, California. He started coaching with me. He doesn't have any money at, at all. You know, pastors don't get very paid very much. And he said, Dustin, I want to invest in real estate, but I don't have any money. I said, let's work on it. So we started coaching. He had a house he bought in 2014, had a decent amount of equity. So what we did was we got a home equity line of credit on his property, pulled out cash, bought a property. I think it was in Georgia for, they were asking 120, we're investor, 120,000, we're investors. We don't pay top dollar. We paid lower. So we bought it for like $78,000, which is great. Put in like $20,000 worth of work. Now it's worth 180. He refinanced it, pulled the cash back out, paid off his home line of credit, has now this house with none of his own money. I think he's making $350 a month. And so when I'm looking at financial freedom, I'm saying, I wanted to quit my job. He's a pastor. He loves serving. He wants to do that, but he wants to make sure that his family is taken care of. Everybody's different and everybody needs to start realizing what is that going to look like for you? Is it to where you can travel the world when you didn't make sure you have enough money? to where you cover your expenses and travel the world? Is it that you want to keep your job, but you want to have more time so you can work less, so you can be with your family? Everybody has to figure out exactly what, not necessarily their why, their why is, is good, but it's like, what's their goal? What do they want to achieve so that their life frees up? Because of the biggest thing that we can ever send, the most expensive commodity we can ever spend and never get any more of, we can't make any more of, is time. And so when you're thinking about financial freedom, for me, how do I get my life back, get my time back, instead of working 40 plus hours a week for somebody else? That was for me is realizing, I would much rather be playing with my kids. I'd much rather be going you know, to dinner with my wife, I'd rather than working for somebody else. So everybody needs to figure out what their goal is in life to get their life back than working for somebody else. At least that's my suggestion and how I coach everybody. Yeah, get your life back. I love that. In other words, you know, like I say that, give yourself some room in your mind, you know, some space in your mind that you can think something else. That's a financial freedom. Because if you're always worried about, you know, making money, I have to make more money because there's no bar. Because no matter how much money you have, you're just going to keep raising the bar um, 1 million, 2 billion, 20 million, maybe 100 million, you know, or maybe billion. So you're going to keep raising the bar. So you need to understand that, you know, what your goal is, where you see yourself. And also, you know, how can you enjoy to or live? Because in all this chaos, we forget to live. And like I earlier said, life is too short. And I really like that, you know, get your life back. That should be the goal. So figure out what your goal is in this life. And accordingly, that's going to give you financial freedom. And I have seen that in our industry, a lot of people, they say that all the time. If you want to be financial sound or if you want it to be financially free, invest now. That's the kind of, I would say very cliche, but that's the slogan, invest now. And a lot of uh, people don't understand that. So I would like to hear your thoughts on that. 100%. And I wholeheartedly agree with you. So there's a couple quotes or proverbs that I love. So you do not wait to buy real estate, you buy real estate and wait. The properties exactly. I bought back in yeah, in 2006, when I first started investing, prices were really high, rents really low, but I made sure I bought them. And now these properties, 
the minimum, remember the minimum was $250 a month in passive income from each property that I, I bought. Now they're fi or 500, 600, $700 because rents go up. Time is your best friend when you own real estate. Now, another quote is, and I love this. So it's almost like, I think it's a proverb, like an ancient proverb. When is the best time to plant a tree? Well, it was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. You need to plant that tree today. So you listen to this, you need to start realizing that 20 years are gonna, is eventually gonna go by and you're gonna have to look back and say 20 years from now, man, I was listening to Vinky's podcast and we, I really want to invest. I just never did. And 20 years is by, I wish I would have done that. Don't be that way. You want to be thinking, I'm so glad I was listening to Vinky. I took action. I started investing 20 years ago and look at where I'm at now. And what's also amazing is for my students, well, for me, it took me about eight years to get enough properties to quit my job. My students are doing it faster than me because I'm cutting out all the problems. I'm, I've done all the hard knocks and I'm showing them the step-by-step. -step. Now my students are quitting in two and three years because that's their goal is to be financially independent and become a full-time investor, but two and three years because I fast-tracked it. And so, you know, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, Vinky's podcast all the time, you're gonna get education that's gonna fast-track you. You're gonna hopefully jump over hurdles. I love another quote or another saying is, a smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so you're, if you're listening to this, you're gonna spend one of two things in order to get what you want. You're gonna spend your time or you're gonna spend your money. Meaning if you wanna do what I did, it took me eight years. It took my time because I didn't have anybody to help me or at least back in 2006, there wasn't any great podcast like Vinky's podcast to listen to. I just had to figure it out on my own, but praise the Lord I did. And now I look back now, I spent my time, but I would much rather have spent, I don't know, money to get that time back. Now my students, they're, you know, they're paying me money because they're literally getting my time for coaching them, which I love to do. That's how I got into coaching was as I was quitting my job, my friends and family members and everybody started asking me. So I started, you know, to teach them. So I started doing it. I enjoyed it. I was like, well, I got plenty of free time. Let me start a podcast. Let me write books and stuff. But with that, what I realized was when you fast track, you're either going to pay, like I said, you're going to pay with your time or your money. If you pay your money, you like, instead of your time, you fast track your success. You fast track to get to where your goals, that where you want to be. And then you look back, you're like, I'm so, like that money. I'm making so much more money now. I'm so glad I spent that money back then. Does that all make sense? Yes, it does. And plus you're making uh, money in your primary job, you know, and then you're trying to put money in the stocks, bonds, or sitting in your savings account, or even your 401k. And if you learn how to multiply that, you could be just like way ahead of the game, right? If you, you can sure do can. that, you don't even have to leave your primary job. You just can just don't keep on working and start building a platform. And uh, there comes a point where you can think, okay, now I can just, you know, take a deeper dive. It's about time now. So let's talk about your book. You know, you talk in your book too, how to quit your job with your rental properties. So what are some of the steps that you have shared there in your book? That you think yeah, so this is super golden nuggets. People need to know this. The biggest golden nuggets are a couple of things. Number one, passive income is the only way to invest. Back in 2006, when I started investing, there were a lot of investors investing for appreciation. They were basically hoping to sell the house for more than it's worth. And mm -hmm. they were getting over leveraged, lots of you know debt, getting over leveraged. I, I love debt because debt makes me money if you do it right. So mm -hmm. the biggest thing for me is passive income. That's why I created my brand, Master Passive Income. That's my podcast, Master Passive Income, because once I bought one rental property, it made me money at $250 a month in passive income. With that, I've mastered it. Like my property works for me now. I don't do any work. I've mastered it. So with that, my suggestion is invest for passive income. When there is a correction, because there will always be corrections in every market, you know, it's, it's usually seven, eight years. This one's been a lot longer because they've been printing money. It's like 12, 15 years now, but there will be a correction. It looks like it's kind of coming right now. But when that happens, if you're investing for passive income, it doesn't matter if the value of the house goes down, you're still making money. Rents don't go down because sadly, if people lose their job, they lose their house, they get foreclosed on their house that they're buying. But what does that do to the demand of renters? Goes up. So I have more demand for my properties. So I make more money. Now, that's the first one. Make passive income every single month. My suggestion, $250 a month in passive income. I mean, think about it. If you want financial freedom, 
one property at $250 a month, that is $3,000 a year in passive income. 10 properties is $2,500 a month, $30,000 a year in passive income, not working. 20 properties is $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year without working. And when you just got to scale it to fit whatever you want. So that's the first one, passive income. The second one, I've already mentioned this, and I go into much greater detail in all this, and this is what I coach my students. We build the business first. We mm -hmm. build the business anywhere in the country. In fact, we love investing out of state because we might live in an area where our prices are too high, rents are too low, and it's not going to be feasible, but we go other places. Midwest is fantastic right now down in the Carolinas and in the Florida. Great, great areas to invest. People want to live there. Just because you don't want to live there doesn't mean somebody else won't. They might love that area. So those are two things, passive income and build the business first. And you know what's also funny, Vinky, or fun, Vinky, is I, in all my, like my book, my podcast, my podcast is actually, it's really just a solo show, me just giving out content. I've been doing it since 2006, no, 15, 15, 16 ish. And with that, I'm reaching 1.5 million downloads. It's just terrific, just giving all this information. And my coaching is like a couple hundred coaches, or sorry, I have coach hundreds and thousands of students now that we created a real estate investor conference. I created a conference because I thought back in 2006, I wish there was a like a giving type of conference that is all about helping people as opposed to those, you know, you walk in the room, there's a booth in the back, like I talked about at the very beginning, it's all hype. And they say, now run to the back and go give us money. And so I created a conference because I have so many students now, so many people in my audience that I created the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference on top of my book. I just give my book away now because I found, and this will get a little bit back to one other point, which we'll get into in just a second. I love serving people. And the reason why is because my life gets better as I serve more people, buy properties that people can live in at a good rent, by teaching them how to invest, by connecting people so that they get better connections. And Vinky, you're gonna appreciate this. I know you, you, you um, definitely understand this. So we in our lives wanna have four different legacies in our life. Number one, a money legacy. That gets us to where we have the ability to buy whatever we want, do whatever we want. The second thing, and the money leads into a time legacy. Money leads into time. Now we have the time to do and go and be with people. And so that's the money leads into time. The next one is your time legacy leads into your relationship legacy. Now that you have your time back, you're not working for somebody else, devote it to your family, devote it to your, your mom, your, your, your children, to maybe even the community. And so money leads into time, time leads into the relationships. Relationships then, and I'm blessed to be at this point, leads into a service legacy. And that's why I created my conference. That's why I have the podcast. I mean, I literally give out so much stuff for free, just like you with this podcast. That's what we do now is we're in the service legacy. Because like I said, the more people that I serve, the better my life gets and the better their lives get. And what I realized was, in fact, my first goal when I was 27 years old, I said in 10 years, when I'm 37, I want to quit my job. Praise the Lord, check, I got that. After that, I made another goal. It was to make a million dollars a year in my businesses. And I kid you not, Vinky, like my, I'm not driven by money. Just like you said, like when is enough? Well, for me, I'm not driven by it. So that million dollar goal was so like, it was an anti goal. I just like didn't want to do any of that. So I changed my goal now. It's to help 1 million people invest in real estate and hopefully become financially independent. So everything from the book to the podcast, to the conferences, coaching, everything like that, just like what you're doing, is just serving other people. And I found the more I serve, the better my life gets and the better everybody else's life gets. We have the same goal. I have, I say that over and over again, in every podcast, everywhere, that I'm going to touch 1 million lives in a meaningful way before I exit and high five to that. So one last question. Given the economic situation that we are in, the market is kind of a roller coaster, so volatile. How are you doing? And what does the future look like for you? I have to say this. So a lot of people are seeing, oh, interest rates are up. It might be a bad time. I'm so excited. I'll just stay, stay, jump out there and say that. I have been waiting for interest rates to go up for a number of years now, like five years now. I am so excited about this coming time to invest in real estate. So if you remember the crash in 2008, 2008, bad for lots of people, but because I'm an investor, I was investing for passive income, as the market crashed, people were going bankrupt. I was like, where's everybody? All right, I'll just buy more properties. 
I bought so many properties in the 2009, 2010, 11, and 12. I just kept gobbling them up. I didn't have enough money to buy all the properties that I could in the coming future. I'm not sure exactly when with every, all this turmoil, you know, jobs being laid off, literally companies are laying off tens of thousands of people. Google laid off 10,000, um, yeah, Facebook laid, laid off 10,000. Like everybody's laying off lots of company or people on top of that inflation, interest rate, all that stuff is making it bad for the economy. Now I'm not excited for it bad in the economy and hurting people. I just know from, I remember back in 2008, I better be ready when something else, if it happens again, I better be ready. And so what I'm seeing, the exact same thing back in 2008 is happening now. I remember in 2008, people were telling me, people had no clue what they're doing in real estate investing at all, or real estate in general. You better buy real estate now, or you will never be able to afford it. They started saying that back in 2021, 2022, saying the exact same thing. You better buy real estate now, or you'll never afford it. I heard that same song and dance before. So I've been waiting. I've been buying good properties, you know, lower. Um, uh, I've been getting them lower than they're worth. That's because I'm an investor. But I am so excited. And everybody listening to this, you need to be ready. So what does that look like being ready? Start saving your money, making sure you're getting out of debt and getting education. Start investing now. And Im imagine like this. I like an analogy. So if you're going to go surfing, you know, you're on your board, you're waiting for a wave to come. Well, you need to paddle in order to get momentum to catch a wave to ride it in. Well, you don't wait till after the wave passes you to start paddling to catch a wave. You'll never catch it. You need to start paddling before the wave gets to you so you can catch the momentum. Same thing with real estate investing. Keep listening to Ben Key's podcast week in and week out. You, week out. you want to be learning and you want to get education. If you want coaching, if you want a mentor, like you need to have the knowledge first. So that's paddling. The second thing is you also want to start investing, start building that business, start finding the right syndicators to be investing in because they're going to know how to make money in this downtime. Like if, you're, if they're good investors, they're going to know how to make money. I know how to make money in my business. I'm excited for this. You want to get around investors, syndicators that are like, I'm excited for this time. That's who you want to be around. So you want to start paddling now. Keep listening to this podcast. Keep getting education. Start building that business or start finding the right experts to work with. And then when it comes, you're going to be so excited because it's going to be the best time ever to invest in real estate. I love that. So we are out of time. Oh, my God. I just love talking to you. I can keep on going. But a little bit time crunch here. I'm going to ask you one golden nugget here for my audience. Share golden, golden nugget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a golden nugget. Uh, outside of what I've already given, so definitely <laughs> passive income, hiring experts. Another golden nugget is honestly, it's being persistent, patience, mm -hmm. patience and persistence and not giving up. Like couple all those together. I mean, it's grit is really what it comes down to. That's Being true. able to push through everything because you're going to fall down. You're going to make errors. Things are going to happen. Now, remember, my first property that I bought, my property manager started stealing from me within six months. It was horrible. But if I would have given up then and said, oh, what was me? It doesn't work. My aunt who's told me, hey, don't do it. Your uncle Johnny didn't. He did it and he lost money. I listened to her. No, I didn't listen to her. I had my grit put. I said, you know what? I'm going to persevere. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to push through this. And doing that, I made more and more wins, made some more mistakes. But every single thing that was a loss or a mistake, I ripped it out of my business. Every win, I kept it in my business. That's literally what I'm coaching now because I'm an investor. I'm not a coach. I'm an investor. I just so happen people ask me questions and I give them answers of what I'm doing so that I can help them out. But that's the golden nugget is definitely have grit push through it, be patient on top of passive income, building business, getting experts, all that sort of stuff, but be persistent. It will pay off. Remember, we don't wait to buy real estate. We buy real estate and wait. And you want to look back 20 years from now saying, I'm so glad I listen to Vin Key's podcast every single week because I am actually an investor now. I am financially free, whatever that looks like for you. Thank you so much. I love that. Be persistent and have the patience because a lot of time people are not patient. They're not patient with the process. They just want everything right here, right now, whatever they're doing. But the thing is, even if you plant a seed, it takes a while to give you a fruit or a flower, right? So patience is a virtue, whether you like it or not. So this brings us to our rapid fire round. I'm going to ask you five questions. You're going to answer in one word or one sentence only. Are you ready? I am. 
All right. So the first question is, what is one of the most important things that you have learned in your life? And how did it change your life after learning it? Passive income by far. Great. What is the best book that you have read or recommend to my audience? Awesome. So I have to give you two. So number one is the Bible. I read the Bible literally every single multiple times a day. Another one is The Richest Man in Babylon. Richest Man in Babylon, written by George S. Clausen. Super phenomenal. It's written like 100 years ago, but it gives principles, financial principles, helps you to invest. It's a brilliant book. Pick that up. You got to do it. Awesome. In one word, what does life mean to you? Oh, well, for me, life means because I read the Bible every single day. How do I glorify God and serve him every single day? What is your biggest passion? Serving people. Absolutely serving people. If you could turn back in time and talk to your younger self, what would you tell yourself? Oh, get passive income even sooner. I started back when I was 27. So start sooner. If you were 16, 17, I've had students that are 16, 17 getting started. Passive income instead of active income. Working one time, getting paid over and over and over again is passive income. Great. So how can people reach out to you, Dustin? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I have a free course I love to give out. Do you mind if I share that with everybody? Of course, please go ahead. Awesome. So if you text the word rental, R-E-N-T-A-L, rental to 33777. Very simple, rental to 33777. Or you can go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course. Forward slash free course, all one word. I'll literally give you my course giving you how tell, showing you how to build the business, how to find a, anywhere in the country to invest, how to scale your business to be able to become financially independent. And with that, you can also find me on my podcast, the Master Passive Income Podcast. And it's really a solo show. I just give out all this information. You can also find me on the YouTube channel, Master Passive Income. Just literally look that up, Master Passive Income. Last thing is my Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. It's an annual conference. It's literally just all about giving. I have 43 expert investors, speakers coming. It's a three-day in-person conference. This year's in Phoenix. Next year is probably going to be on the East Coast. But that is fantastic too. Rubecon, R-E-W-B-C-O-N, Rubecon, all abbreviated, rubecon.com. And if you use the promo code podcast, I'll know you came from Vint Key's uh, podcast and you'll get 10% off your, your ticket anytime. Like if you listen to this two years from now, It'll still always be there. So get that. But then the last thing, the Dustin Heiner on Instagram. And Vinky, I'm not that arrogant. It's the only handle I could come up with. But T H E Dustin Heiner on Instagram. I get DMs all the time. So I love chatting with people, helping people out. But it's been so great being on your show. Thank you so much. I love our conversation today.